down. Okay, everybody. So today we're going to be doing a little question and answer session. I know you guys enjoyed that last time, so hopefully it will be interesting this time as well. So what we're going to do, oh, sorry, this is really shaky. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to start out by opening our uh, our new uh, awards, I guess you'd call them, for um, basically hitting our milestones. Now, we have an old milestone and then the current one for a million because we never asked for the older one. Um, so now we have them both. We'll open them both. You guys will get to see that. Now, bear with me for just a second. I'm going to make sure we got everything running smooth um, and a couple stuff. So give me just a second while I check on that. Let's see. Upcoming. Na, 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 na. Let's see. Details. I'm not seeing any comments yet, so I'm just going to give people kind of a second to come on. And while I kind of fiddle with this, it looks like I've got put it mute on here so you guys don't have an echo. Okay. Yep, here we are. Okay, just a slight delay. Okay. Um, okay, it's unlisted. That would be part of the thing here. So let's go to, there we go. Public. Done. Save. That would prevent people from being on here. Here we go. Now let's see how things change. Yeah, he appears now. Okay, now it appears. Now we're live. Okay. So sorry for... Those watching the recorded version, there's a little bit of a slow moment. Okay, now let me t check a couple of things here. And live stream, let's see the video link. There we go. And, oh, here we go. Are you having a great day? Congrats, man. Okay, here we go. The comments are coming in. So, sweetheart. Yep. You can sit here and let's you see. Want me to sit there? Yeah, so let's say someone said something and you want to block them. See the little red, the little dots? You click on it, it goes fast. Um, so you click on that. So you can pin the message, you can report them, you can just remove the message, put the user in a timeout, hide user on this channel. Okay, got it. Okay. All righty, sorry guys, we're just getting set up here. I'm going to switch places with my wife here. Say hi, Maggie. Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing today? Saludos. Buen trabajo. Okay. okay. So I'm going to have Maggie on the computer so she can, um, we'll try and, and respond a little better last time than we did last time. Um, we'll start with, um, go on ahead and... Um, Let's let's answer a few questions first, because obviously it'll take a minute for people to get on uh, or to come on. So, oh, that was probably my brother. Someone asked who was in the back. My brother rents our basement downstairs. Okay, so today the main kind of like event, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up the packages we got from YouTube. So it's our awards for our million subscribers, and then another award that we didn't request that was for a, a lesser amount I, I think it was a hundred thousand so we're going to go ahead and open those um we're going to before i'm just going to take a minute kind of chat with you guys answer a couple questions and then we'll dive into that so um someone asked how boone's training's doing he's uh he's doing really good his caching has been pretty consistent for the most part lately though he's kind of hit a little bit of a um uh, what would you call it? A slump. Um, but he's been really good up to this point. So I think he's just, you know, pr pretty typical in training. They don't just move forward. They move up and down. So anyway, he's on a little bit of a down right now, but he's been really good. Um, he has had some, some good success on muskrats. We haven't shown that yet. So we'll be having some videos coming out showing what he's done on muskrats here pretty soon. Um, but yeah, all in all, he's doing good. Um, Raptor's doing well. I know a lot of people are curious about 
um, Raptor and, and how he's doing. We don't do a lot with Raptor because of obviously the cold outside, but we let him run around for a second, call him back and feed him. And that's pretty much the gist of what we do with Raptor. Um, anyway, uh, oh, another thing that I guess we could discuss, uh, this would probably be a good thing to open up with, is um, <laughs> someone asked if my mink are getting sick. And that kind of leads into the whole coronavirus thing. So I didn't really want to get into this. I haven't really wanted to bring this topic up or discuss this topic, but it is a hot topic on my comment section. So let's discuss a little bit about coronavirus and mink. I'm going to try and keep my opinions out of this as best I can um, and try and keep it just factual. But if I do creep into the opinion uh, side of things, I apologize. I'm going to try and avoid it. So, I'm not going to discuss, I know a lot of you guys want to know, so what's my opinion on what's been going on in Denmark? I don't want to discuss my opinion because my opinion doesn't really matter. So here's what's been happening in Denmark. They've, um, we've known for a long time that coronavirus, uh, mink are susceptible to it just like humans. And so when a, a sick farmhand goes to work and he could potentially pass the coronavirus from himself onto the mink he's working with, who then pass it on to each other, and uh, they have a big epidemic on the farm. So anyone who's going to, onto that farm potentially could get coronavirus from the mink. Everyone else is totally safe because the mink are very, very uh, locked in a in a secure situation. Um, the farm is very, very. Um, um, excluded from the rest of society. So there's no real risk unless you're coming on that farm. As far as I can, as far as I understand Denmark, however, felt the necessity to just kind of make a very rash decision, which I'm pretty sure they're going to be regretting. And whoever made that decision, Oh, sorry, I'm getting into opinions now. Anyway, they made a very rash decision to, uh, wipe out all of their mink to help prevent the spread of Corona I'm not sure. Anyway, once again, getting into opinions. Uh, anyway, that's what they did. Um, the repercussions are what they what they are, and people want to know how does that affect my mink? Nothing, you know, nothing has affected my mink yet. Uh, we have not gotten corona yet ourselves. So, um, yeah, we just do what we can do to avoid it just like anyone else. I mean, there's nothing really to be said about it. Um, like I said, I don't really care to share my opinion because who cares what my opinion is about what they did in Denmark and what they will probably do in other countries. I, um, that's, that's up to them. That's their prerogative. Uh, as far as what I do with my mink, I just, you know, just like anyone else try and avoid Corona. If I feel sick at all, then I, um, which I haven't, but if I did start feeling sick at all, I'd have someone else take care of the mink. That's uh, just really what it comes down to. So anyway, um, anything else that, um, before we get into the opening? I don't think so. I can't think of anything. Did you see any questions that maybe I should answer before I jump into it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing stuck out to you? Okay. No. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and... Oh, I accidentally ha hit a comment that was just hearts. Uh, so whoever that was, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, just touched it and it just automatically did it. And I'm like, <laughs> crap. Sorry. They, they probably won't notice. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. there's a bunch of people just saying congratulations and... Yeah. Oh, someone wants to see my belly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah. So I guess we can start. I'm not... Okay, let's go ahead and start with the uh, well, let me go in there. Uh, opening of our, our cool little, little deal. Oh, you want to see Boss? Uh, he's Boss laying right down. Here. How do I switch it? Just trying to count. There we go. There's Boss. He's the black lump. Shirini's the brindle lump. And Leia's the <laughs> small black lump. Boss! There he is. He's awake. Oh, you see there's your knee. Leia. There's Leia. Oh, good girl. Oh, you're going to come sit by me. Whoa, that's way too close, Leia. Oh, someone's asking about your knee. knee bite. Oh, there's bite a big work. girl. Oh, yeah, Shirini. We haven't done bite work with her. We've been way too busy. 
Um, plus Corona, it's like. Yeah, plus Corona and a bunch of junk. So we just haven't done any bite work with Shuni. Um, we should be doing that before terribly long, but um, yeah. Uh, people oh, people want to see Raptor. Raptor too. Yeah. Yeah, we can get um, we can get Raptor out. Let's see. So. Do you want to go get him right now or later? Uh, we could do a. We could do a raptor. Let's do raptor first. You want to okay. hold it? Yeah. Um, hey everyone, it's me again. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we're getting the lizard right now. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we thought about streaming before, like, the actual hunts. It's just, there's a lot of empty space <laughs> that we're just waiting around. So I don't know if be, I don't know if you'll be, like, that interested to do anyway. But. Buenas noches. Gracias. Someone said congratulations in Spanish. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm still with the nauseous, but mostly in the morning now. It used to be like every day and all all day long. So that's just how my pregnancies are, unfortunately. But yeah. Yeah, I am the camera girl. Well, sometimes. Lately, I've, I've been staying home because I usually feel sick, <laughs> but I'm excited to get out there again and, you know, film some more. That's actually what I like to do a lot. I like to just, you know, be filming. Because if I don't, I, there's been times that I don't film. Oh, no, they're not in bed. Sorry. Um, Olive and Ellie are watching a movie. <laughs> we can bring them out soon. Just right now, we're kind of like, okay, what are you going to do? But, yeah, anyway, um, so... The filming, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling better. I am 20 weeks. Oh, hey, look who's here with me. Hi, hi. Oh, yeah, you're just such a sweetie. I love her. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Let's see the questions. Oh, okay, okay. That's good. New puppy update. Um, the puppies are gone. They they went to their homes. I think most of them went out like farther from us. And we have one friend of a friend who got one. Oh, here's Joe. Yeah, there's Raptor. There you go. There he is. He looks a lot smaller than he looks. Yeah. Yeah, I'll back from there. Yeah. Can you see good? Yeah. But usually with Raptor, we take him outside. Well, not outside. Uh, into our uh, garage. No, wait. Basement. I'm sorry. And he runs around for a while, and then when he's done, we call, well, Joe calls him for a feeding. Yeah, he can't be outside very much because it just gets cold fast, even inside. I don't, obviously, outside, outside, he doesn't go outside at, at all, but in yeah, the house. Yeah, we have snow right now. Even in the house, he gets chilled just because, I mean, he's made for really hot temperatures, and we don't keep our house at 85 degrees, so... Shirni is a Dutch Shepherd. Can you see him or is he yeah. running where you can't see him? No, I can see him. Oops. How old is Raptor, Joe? He's just barely a year old. Oh. Oh yeah, we got him around this time last year. Yeah. He's just like a year old. So he's a year old. Um like barely. Oh. It was like a month ago, I think. Yeah. Someone's asking about the baby's name. Should we tell him? Yeah. So we decided to call our girl. Wait, I forgot. Galilee. <laughs> was... Galilee that's right. <laughs> Stitch, right? <laughs> I know. 
My daughter's name is Elise. I've done that literally. I am so bad with names and like catch me off guard stuff. So I was like, "What's your little girl's name?" Her name's all. Well, I've... All, uh, Olive. Olive. That's her name. I'm well, that did you do that with Eleanor or with Olive that you were blessing her baby blessing and you forgot? I think it was Eleanor. Her middle name. <laughs> no, it might have been Olive actually. I, f I forgot her middle name. Olive. Crickets, 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 crickets. Julieta Carter. <laughs> there he goes. How many pets we got? We have all of the mink, which are quite a few. We have Raptor, we have Boss, Shoni, Leia, and just recently Joe got me some fish. And I'm super happy about it. <laughs> Forget Lammy. Oh, and Lammy! And hopefully some baby. Baby lambs. I'm so excited. Okay, Raptor's all done with his dinner. I'm going to go put him away. Let's see if I can... Where are you going? Go climb up there. See, he's looking really good. Climb up there so you can see ya. Yeah, Lammy's boyfriend is gone. He went back to his home. We're probably going to see him next year again when it's breeding time. Um, I am 27. Yeah. I'm going to be 28 soon. And I can't believe it. Raptor is going to get, I, I believe, how big is Raptor going to get, Joe? It's four feet? Well, four and a half. Five four feet. and a half. If he's a male, some people argue that he's not a male. Hi. Others say that nobody can tell, so it's silly to say what he is. Let's so. see. Anyway, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know. Okay, so we do the opening, the grand opening. Where's my knife? Okay. Okay, go get your knife. <laughs> how do we meet? We meet? We met at church. No, she doesn't play with any, Olive doesn't play with any of the other mink because um, they're, you, to have a mink that you can handle like Joe does, you have to spend a lot of time with them. And if you miss like a few weeks, it, days even when they're babies, they're not as nice. So we don't trust them. So yeah. maybe in the future she'll get one. Okay. Let's do the grand opening. I'm not sure which is which. So I thought that one was the silver one. Should and we do then the little one first, got... I guess? Okay, so we'll open the little one first. We don't I, know. I thought that was the gold one, though. So we probably should open that open one. Because okay. I believe that one is the one for 100K subscribers. We'll find out in a second. Okay. The... Our pets are pretty well behaved, I will say. <laughs> People are always asking Joe to train their animals, and we're like, ah, maybe someday when we have more time. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Anyway, yeah, so we have to reach out to them. I thought they would, um, like, send you a link and a congratulations letter or something, but they didn't. <laughs> And finally, when this one was, you know, when we reached 1 million, we were like, well, we really want that. Oh. Yeah, I was right. Oh, okay. So you're right. Dang it. So, yeah. So this is for the 1 million subscribers. Oh, cool. We got a little, little thing. That is huge. YouTube, you did it. Congratulations. Oh, wow, that is a little thing. Hi, it? Thor. Okay. okay. That is huge. Wow. Oh. Let's see. Does it say do not eat? <laughs> I don't say anything about do not eat. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so here it is. 
That's Presented cool. to Joseph Carter the Mink Man for passing 1 million subscribers. YouTube. Hey, cool I'm button. there. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, I can see that name over here. Yeah, I, was, I didn't, I couldn't figure out why they would make this, the smaller deal bigger. That yeah, see, sense. I was, I was confused because on the email they said that the silver one was delivered. And I guess he ended up being the gold one. And anyway. So. It is we'll, what it is. We'll open them backwards. It's just fine. Yeah, thanks guys. Couldn't have done it without you guys. For sure. Alrighty. It's not a chocolate coin, Joe. <laughs> I'll taste it and let you know. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what is he talking about? I'm like, oh, yeah, the not eat thing. Yep, here's the other one. Oh, <laughs> the not eat thing. <laughs> okay, and here's the second one. I'll put this over here. And here's our second award. Passing 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, this is why we never did the 100 subscribers, because we just didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so... There got it, it now. Yay. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So we'll have, have to hang these up so people can see, I guess. Thank <laughs> you, yeah. All people right. Well, thank you guys for helping make this possible. It's pretty cool. Pretty big uh, milestone. Should have put my knife. Yeah, it's a pretty... Big knife. You couldn't find your neck knife? <laughs> no, I grabbed the big one. Yep, yep. Man, look at that. That's a, that's a big old thing. Hefty, yeah. I wonder if that's actual gold. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it too, but it was... You mean like showered or what do you call it? The uh, um, Plated. Plated. Because how much did it cost you to buy one? I have no idea. I thought you said it, an amount. It was like a thousand bucks or something expensive. Looks, I can't remember. Six. Anyway. Six. Six, I, don't I doubt know, it's $600. Old, but anyway, it's kind of cool. Yay. What brand <laughs> is your knife? Um, it's it's not a brand. It's a custom made knife that I got as a kid. I was given as a gift when I was like 11, I think. Um, so that I'll go grab the knife if you guys want to talk about it. Um, bite it. <laughs> See if it's real. <laughs> so this is the knife. Oh, I should probably grab the sheath. Yeah, the sheath is pretty cool. Here, show them the details on it. The little head yeah. on the end. So. Pretty cool looking, for sure. Oh, sorry. There's like, it's carved. Sorry, my nails are awful right now. <laughs> okay. It says Chief Joseph right here. And you probably can't read it because it's... Let me see. That's where the snap is it's all worn it out but it says chief joseph and then it has the chief joseph carved into the butt of the antler and this is that a, a bone hand knife it's a it's an antler so here's the the butt of the antler and it's got a nice little natural uh, fits right in your hand it wasn't carved that's just the natural shape of the antler happened to be just right and there's a little gift shop here's the tooled leather um, sheath. That's good looking too. And it was at a gift shop and I would go into the gift shop and I liked this one because it had my name on it, Chief Joseph. My name's Joseph. And it was the only antler that fit your hand perfectly. There was like three other ones or two other ones and they were all knobby and uncomfortable to, to hold. Like they didn't fit in your hand like this one. And I was like, man, I like that knife. And I'd go and look at it. And we worked for, my grandpa worked for the owner of the gift shop. He, well, not, not just the gift shop, but it was a dude ranch. The owner of the dude ranch, who obviously also owned the gift shop, um, he worked for him. And so we would go and look at that. I would go and look at that this knife every day um, after working the horses and stuff. And um, he saw me looking at it every, every week. It was once a week when we had this little show and the gift shop would open. Anyway, so finally one day at the end of the summer when, when I went to go home, he gave it to me. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, I've had it ever since. I was, like I said, when I was like 11. And I've had it ever since. And you can tell it's had a lot of miles on it. But... All righty, so. Thanks, Albert, for the $5. Thank you, Annie, And.
congrats. Morning, Orange. Here's Good Ellie. Job. Ellie, do you want to come say hi? Hi. <laughs> You're so cute. Okay. What's your upload schedule? Um, so my upload schedule, I try and always have one um, at the end of the week. So usually a Friday or a Saturday if I'm late. Um, like late Saturday night if I'm super late <laughs> and then I try and have one in the beginning of the week but that's just optional it depends on how my week's going so if I can I'll try and put one up like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Monday maybe uh, so I sorry it's not a very I don't have a very um, organized schedule like some YouTubers sorry um, here that switch babe Oh, you already switched it. Okay, so <laughs> the honey badger man. Be fun. Okay, let's um if you want to run over there and and tell me Viv, questions. Oh you, you have it here. It's easier on the computer because you can sure. scroll and stuff. Okay. Tell me any questions you want me to answer and then yeah, raptor will get about four feet. That's right. It depends on if he's a male or female. The females get, <clears throat> the males get quite a bit bigger than the females. So if it is a male, he'll be quite a bit bigger than he is, or than than, than he would be if he was a female. So, um, new hunting dog update. New hunting dog update. People want to know. <laughs> hey, that's the same person. All. Uh, Oliver Vasquez uh, wants to know about the new hunting dog update. So we're going to be putting up a um, a video on Vimeo here, kind of talking about the um, the new hunting dog. But basically, to to put it, um, <clears throat> to, the, the simple answer to that is we are we were waiting on a few litters to be born. Um, three different litters to be exact and they were supposed to be born you know right around now or about to be born and basically they all fell through so we weren't able to get a puppy from any of those litters we did have an adult dog or, or a young I shouldn't say an adult it was like a an old puppy that was offered to us and we're going to um, we're going to look into that option I'll, I'll be going into more details on that on my Vimeo channel, kind of about that that other dog option that we're looking at. Um, and then I'll, I may or may not do a, another video. It just kind of depends on if we even go that route. So so don't worry about it yet. Basically, just things are, are in a holding pattern at this moment with uh, as far as the new dog goes. Um, yeah, I know. I should do a collaboration with Sean Woods for sure. I just We just haven't been able to get around to it. Um, we've been pretty busy. Uh, both of us, so it's hard for us to get together. Um, how much time do I spend training a new dog? Um, well, it depends on the new dog and what his job is. I mean, certain jobs don't take a lot of training. Um, and so I don't really do a lot of... It just depends. It really depends. There's no um, specific answer to that. Um, so yeah, did you see any? Well, uh, will there be any more of those 100 plus Vats of Red Kitchen videos soon? Yeah, so oh, perfect. Actually, Lee rang into a topic that I wanted to talk about. So we have <laughs> worked ourselves out of a out of a job. Um, so when it comes to rats, if you've noticed, we haven't done a big ratting video for like several months. Like I think it's been six, seven months, something like that. Um, there's a reason for that. Um, basically, all the places that had huge numbers of rats where we were doing the big rattings, you know, like the pheasant farm and the... And the hold it. Your hand is kind of shaky. Oh, I'm really shaky. Sorry, guys. Um, the pheasant farm and the... Um, feed lots and the other places that we were going that had like tons and tons and tons of rats. We basically, there, I mean, there's no more rats left. So 
I know is probably, I shouldn't say there's no rats, but there's, we can't find any. The farmers aren't seeing any, like what few rats are left. If there's any, they're, they're really laying low and there's not very many of them. So we don't have any ratting, big ratting locations to go to because we've cleaned them all out. Now there were some that contacted us in years past saying, Hey, we've got some rats. You should come out and help us. But we were so busy with the other jobs that we already had that we didn't get to it. And I've lost their number since then. So it's kind of unfortunate. There was, there was like a dairy farm. I think it was this time last year was contacting me and I was like, Oh, I'd love to come out and help out. Um, but I was just so busy with the other um, locations and he wasn't keeping up with me that I didn't get a, it, get around to doing it. So anyone in the Salt Lake area, you don't have to be right in the Salt Lake area. It could be Utah County. It could be uh, Davis County, but somewhere re- relatively close to Salt Lake area within an hour or two of the Salt Lake area. Um, if you have a big rat job, I get tons of little ones. That's not really what I'm looking for. To be honest, like, I kind of get more of those than I, than I can handle someone who's got one or two rats or one or two dozen rats even is considered small for us. We're looking for big, massive, multi-hundred rat locations. Um, you know, two, three, four, five, six hundred rats like what we used to do. We'll still be doing the small jobs and you'll still be seeing occasional videos of them. A lot of times we don't even get footage from those jobs though, because it's difficult. We'll go in, there's two rats we get them, they're done, you know, and it's like, there's nothing to make a video of. So sometimes we'll do a compilation of like four different rat jobs where they each catch two or three rats. And the thing is, it's tricky. Even if we catch a dozen rats, every one of those catches might be out of sight. The mink kills them under a shed and the dog snatches it when the camera's not filming and we don't even get any footage. So those small rat jobs are real hard to film and get anything good for you guys to see. We need a place that's got you know, more than just a dozen or two dozen rats. We're talking like 50, 60 rats minimum, preferably four, five, 600, 700 rats, a thousand rats is is what we're really hoping to find. Just like the locations before, like the feedlots. You remember all those feedlots we used to go to? If you guys remember, man, we were just like catching rat after rat after rat. And we'd go there, you know, multiple times in a month and (laughs) there'd still be plenty of rats left or like the pheasant farm. Yeah, we cleared that out in about three three or four visits, but those three or four visits were action-packed, you know, catching over 100 rats each time. Those are the kind of locations we're looking for. So um, if you guys do, uh, I mean, I know the overwhelming majority of you are out of state or in a different country, and sorry, I really can't help out of state or other country locations. Under most circumstances, there might be a few exceptions, but I can't really make a habit of driving across country with, you know, a dozen to half a dozen mink and, you know, a bunch of dogs. It's just really hard on the animals and um, it's just complicated. There will be special occasions you'll see where I do, um, you know, go out of state, but we're talking a couple times a year at most, if not once every couple of years. Um, that's part of why, if you've been wondering why we haven't met up with Sean, uh, Sean Woods, that's part of the reason. I mean, he's a couple states away, and it's just really complicated to do that with a bunch of animals. Um, Wheeler Farm, you know, I've tr- I've kind of tried with Wheeler Farm. I haven't. I don't think they've got the numbers to be honest. I think they've got two or three dozen rats at best, and they they use so much poison that I'd have to talk them out of. <clears throat> using poison for, you know, several months before it's safe to go there. So I've kind of talked to Wheeler Farm, uh, the person who's mentioning that. Sorry, I've missed what your name was, but um, maybe I ought to look into it a little further. Um, so, yeah, if you guys, uh, if you guys have any suggestions, um, cl- locations kind of within an hour or two of Salt Lake City, Utah, let me know and we'll uh, we'll we'll try and get a hold of them. So let's see any questions that you can what think of. Love. Think, yeah. Um, 
Um, why do you think YouTube says your rules treat you differently than other channels? That's okay. So why is YouTube inconsistent? I don't know. YouTube's inconsistent across the board. So if you look out there, there are channels that are getting flack and demonetization and, and strikes for things that I do all the time. For example, if you look at Sean Woods, he like shows a dead mouse or a mouse getting caught in a trap or anything like that. Boom. He immediately gets all kinds of problems. Um, with me, I show piles and piles of dead rats, you know, dozens and dozens of different rats getting crushed by dogs and killed by mink. I haven't had a problem with it yet, but Sean Woods can't even show a dead mouse that just got, you know, snapped by a trap. So why are they so hard on Sean and so lenient with me? I don't know. But if you take a look at other channels, there's channels where there's guys, um, you know, hunting raccoons or hunting wild boars or other stuff, and they have no problem but if I post something like that, I, I've never done boars, but you know, if I post my raccoon hunting videos, I get flack like almost immediately. So I mean, it's just, I don't know why YouTube's so inconsistent. I, I really can't answer that question. Um, in some areas, they're really lenient with me. In other areas, they're really strict with me. And I mean, get this guys, get this. I have a video. I might've told you this last live stream. So I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I have a video that I kid you not is of Olive a couple of years ago holding a bullfrog. That's it. Nothing, nothing special. It's a video of Olive holding a bullfrog. They took it down because it was child endangerment. Apparently holding a bullfrog is too dangerous for children, guys. I kid you not. I mean, how many other videos have I shown of Olive holding little snakes and other stuff and they've never like said anything about it i don't have a ton of videos like that but i've got a couple different videos of all of handling snakes and they've never complained but the one video where she's holding a bullfrog they like immediate well not immediately actually it took them a couple years to find it but they came down on me for it yeah child endangerment you can't you can't be having bullfrog holding children up in here what do you think this is anyway yeah youtube's youtube's messed up i mean <laughs> that's just all there is to it and i know some people accuse me of like lying and being like oh you're just trying to get extra money or whatever it's like dude man you know i make so much more money on my youtube platform than i do my vimeo platform it's not advantageous to me on from a monetary standpoint to put them on vimeo um it's just i want to keep my youtube channel alive and if i put stuff that YouTube is giving me issues for. If I continue to put it up there, I will lose my channel, like downright completely lose my channel or I run the risk of, of losing it. And with what I do already, <clears throat> I already run that risk. So I'm not going to play extra games with my channel and, and put, you know, raccoon and beaver content up on, on YouTube. So people ask, so why does it cost money on Vimeo? Why isn't Vimeo free like YouTube? Well, Vimeo doesn't have advertising. So I would be working and putting up those videos on Vimeo for free. And that leads to the question, well, why don't you just work for free? And I, you know, respectfully, let me ask you the same question. If your boss said, hey, I want you to come into work on the weekends. Uh, can you do that? And you'd be like, oh, sure. I need the overtime. I'd like to make some extra cash. And your boss says, oh, no, no, no. I want you to come in and work on the weekends for free. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, you know, we're not going to pay you. No overtime, no time at all. It'll just be you know, out of the goodness of your heart. Come into work, please. And um, yeah, don't clock in. I need you to work a good 10, you know, 8, 10 hours and then go home. And that's kind of what <clears throat> me making a Vimeo channel and not getting compensated for is like, I know you guys don't realize the amount of time and effort it takes to make a video because, you know, you guys get to just sit and watch the final product but forget about filming filming takes about a day half to half a day to film it but let's forget about filming because you know frankly i enjoy hunting so but if you've you got to realize the guy holding the camera is no longer my wife because she's she's pregnant and taking care of kids and 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 doing other things to help run our business she's anyway she does a lot of things so i've got someone else holding the camera so i have to pay them to come and film me hunt a raccoon and then I have to pay someone to help me with the editing because I don't have time to do all of the editing. They, they do the kind of beginner stuff. So depending on the video, 
they'll basically crunch it down from two hours of footage to 20 minutes of footage. And then I spend several hours getting that 20 minutes of footage down to the final, you know, 10, 15 minutes that you guys get to see. Um, and it takes half a day to a day of my time to make a video. And I've got to pay a guy for several hours to film and edit part of the video. So it's an expense and time for every single video I create. So that's why, um, that's why we have Vimeo. That's why we charge for Vimeos because it costs money and time to create the extra footage. I could just not film me hunting raccoons. And that's what I did for years and years before Vimeo existed. I just didn't post those videos um, at all. Like I didn't post them anywhere. I just didn't make them. So it's pretty easy to do that, right? Um, well, not only that, like also we have a, a ton of animals to feed, which we try to like, we feed them the stuff we hunt, but because there's so many, we have to, you know, supplement with other foods and yeah. their care, their water. It's just a lot of things that come in, go into it. It's not just, you know. So, yeah. So anyway, yeah. that basically that's why Vimeo costs money is they don't, give any advertising i wanted to be able to make those videos available which years past i just didn't i didn't film it when i went raccoon hunting so now i get to film take the time and the money and the to make those videos to, to pay someone to film it to pay someone to help me edit it and then me finish the editing all that time and effort um you know i'm sorry i'm just not willing to do that for free i'm not going to pay a cameraman to film me and then you know put half a day into editing a video yeah, anyway. anyway so that answers the vimeo question um oh while we're on vimeo topic sorry let's just wrap that up one Someone's other thing asking to where's the, vi the leia video that she caught the muskrat uh, i mean the raccoon in the pipe they can't find it they can't find it on vimeo uh -huh. it's the very f last, last video um just put a put it in a link well, I'll put it in a link in the, in the description of this video. So someone wants to know where that raccoon of Leia catching the raccoon um, video is. I'll put that in a link when we're done with this live stream at the in the description of this video. And you, you can go right to that specific video. Um, so a couple of people have been curious what is on Vimeo. So there's there's four different types of videos that we put on Vimeo. And sorry, this was not intended to be a Vimeo advertisement someone just asked about it so let me wrap this up real quick so number one vi type of, of video that we put on v vimeo is obviously stuff that we can't uh, put on youtube so that could be it's like a raccoon hunting video the next thing we put in into vimeo is um extended versions so a video that um part of it's on youtube like the one we just barely posted but there's a portion that we had to take out because of youtube's um rules and such so then we put the rest of it on vimeo so it's partly on youtube but the rest of it's on vimeo uh, another one that we do is we'll do extended versions which is basically um because of the way youtube's algorithms work there are videos i cut down to 10 minutes or 12 minutes which really could run 20 minutes but if i leave the whole 20 minutes it's going to hurt the algorithm so I just cut it out. And like I said, I've been doing that for years, but now instead of just cutting out and throwing it away, I give those extended versions to Vimeo in case you want to watch the whole thing. And then the last thing that we do on Vimeo that's different from YouTube is we do early releases. So a lot of times I edit videos um, days or months or weeks ahead of time before I post them on YouTube. Well, I just immediately put them av available on Vimeo. So you'll get to watch it a few hours to a few days to a few weeks or even a month or more before YouTube gets to watch it, depending on my schedule of posting the videos on YouTube. Vimeo will get them early. Yeah. Anyway, that's how that works. So i um, not going to go into that any longer. Um, anyone who's been posting addresses or locations that I could check out for rats, I will be going through the comments when we're done, and um, I'll try and look those up. Um, I feel like there was a question... If I ever hunted deer, I'm not a big deer hunter. If they'd let me hunt deer with dogs or falcons or something, or not falcons, eagles, obviously. <laughs> dogs or eagles or cheetahs or something, I would totally be down with that, but it's not legal take 
in my state anyway. So no, I don't hunt deer. If I could hunt them with my dogs, I would, but it's, it's just not allowed. Um, has the vi how has the virus affected U.S. mink? Well, so far in the U.S., they haven't done any drastic things like they did in Denmark. So the farms just get infected and yeah, they get over it. Uh, that's how it should happen. Um, let's see. Any Anything that stuck out to you, love? Mm -hmm. Oh, someone asked, like, well, was it elk? Um, the antler? antler yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. The knife. I'm not sure if, if it's elk or deer, the antler to the knife. I, I I would assume it's it's deer. It doesn't look big enough to me to be elk, but I'm no, since I don't hunt those animals, I, I don't know a ton about them. But to me, it looks like a deer antler. Um, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that, but I'm not an expert, so don't, don't quote me. Um, Can you, could, you, could we see another trip to the city hunting cigarette rats again? Oh, we've got some city rats around here, actually. We can look into that. I don't know how many we're going to catch, but I did have some recommendations from a buddy locally of where we could go look for some rats downtown Salt Lake. So we'll go check it out and see if it's worth doing. I, I, city rat hunting, to be honest, is pretty sketchy. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, it's a little, but we'll, we'll, we'll take a look and see. Um, We don't have any baby mink right now. <laughs> yeah, baby mink, baby mink are all born um, right around uh, April, end of April, beginning of May. Um, no, we haven't. We don't visited the mink farm by Sandy Public Works. Oh yeah, no. no. Uh, I think I know the location you're you're talking about, and that's a great raccoon hunting spot, actually. <laughs> uh, we haven't done anything for rats, but there are raccoons like crazy there. Uh, we do a lot of pest control over there, actually, on that particular mink farm. Um, it's a shut down mink farm, but they have a... Anyway, we don't need to go into the details. So you um, said also the, about the collaboration with um, that guy, Ranch something? Yeah, I don't remember his name, so I didn't want to talk about it because I can't even remember his name. We'll look into doing that. Um, Do you only have litters once a year? Yes. Yeah, mink can only have babies once a year. Um, what's the status of the greyhound that was in some of my videos? Are you talking about that yellow greyhound named Lily? I'm, I'm thinking that's probably what someone's referring to. Anyway, I'll, I'll tell you what happened to Lily, I guess. Whether or not that's the one you're talking about, I'm not sure. But that yellow dog in some of my older videos, whose name is Lily, she is living with a good friend of mine named Chuck. Um, Lily had no interest in hunting at all, not even a little bit. So we gave her um, as a pet to my good friend. And he lets her run around, and he's out in the country, so she gets to run around and stuff. But since she doesn't like to hunt, you know, she's just a house pet. 99% of the time, then he, she, she goes out when he's out, um, you know, in the fields and stuff. Rafa Raccoon, hey, I just discovered your content and I'm happy I did. Oh, cool. Thanks. Um, someone asked how, how, um, how much meat do the animals eat? Like how much food do they eat? Oh, they eat so much food. So I'd have to sit and calculate that out. Um, we go through at least... Oh, what? I don't know, 25 pounds of meat a day. I, I have no idea. I haven't calculated it out, to be honest. Um, it's at least like 20, 25 pounds of food a day. Do you still have a day job or just YouTube? So I have my own, my own business. That's what I do full time is the YouTube videos as well as the Vimeo videos. And then I do get compensated a little bit for the pest control that I do, but it's, it's not really, it's not very substantial to be honest. What would your plans be for Shani in the future? 
Um, just continue working on her tracking abilities and then um, I need to get back. I, I really need to get back to um, <laughs> Nephi, you're a dork. Um, I saw your comment, you dork. Um, hey, Maggie, there's a paid question that just came up, but I didn't see it. Um, thanks for whoever donated that. I'll Have you done anything with Shirley Breeder to show him how she's come along? No, so I haven't showed. Uh, the breeder of Shirney has seen her do all her work, um, like catching rac uh, raccoons and rats and stuff like that. So he's familiar with that. We haven't done a lot of bite work with her lately, and that would be um, what he would be most interested in. So um, he hasn't seen that uh, much of that. Um, what's my opinion on firearms? They're just a tool. Um, I, I have them. I don't, I'm not a big fan of hunting with them. I don't, it's just not my thing. I'm not into the point and shoot hunting. I'm not, no, no offense to anyone who is. It's just, it's just not my thing. Um, so I don't, I don't shoot very often. Actually pretty, pretty good shot. At least last time I pulled out a gun, I hit exactly what I was shoot pointing at and put the gun away. I mean, that was about it. I'm not, I'm not big into gun hunting though. Um, Any tips on helping a dog become more confident when latching onto a coon or getting and getting it instead of dancing around? Yeah, I mean, that's that's another content we can add to Vimeo too, like. How to train so the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how to train a dog to do what it doesn't want to do. I mean, you can't, there's, there's only so much you can do with that. If the dog doesn't want to engage, the dog's not going to engage. Um, there's ways, I'm sorry guys. It's really, this phone like takes every single shake and it amplifies it by 10. Um, so like if the dog doesn't want to, engage a raccoon or a rat or whatever you're hunting. Um, I mean, just gently warm it up to the idea as best you can without it scaring it. And, um, G man, thank you very much. That was very kind of you sent $20. Thank you, G man. Um, I mean, if the dog doesn't want to do it, he, he, he doesn't want to do it. That's, that's just kind of what it comes down to is you find an animal who does want to do it. And uh, you do your best to slowly build their confidence and not get them scared. And um, either they'll do it or they won't. I don't really train my animals so much to do things as much as I allow them to do it. And if they don't enjoy doing it, then, I mean, that dog's not a rat job. Yeah, I mean, you build your confidence. That's really all you could do is don't scare them. Don't, don't throw them in the fire. Don't throw them in the deep end. Hope they swim. You know, you say, oh, it's just like teaching a, teaching a child to swim, right? You don't just, I mean, I guess you could, but you shouldn't just toss them in the deep end and say, Hey dude, swim to the side or drown. I mean, that's not a great way to teach your child to swim. You, you take them in the shallow, you let them get comfortable with the water and they splash around and then they stick their face in the water for a second. And then you teach them to doggy paddle while you're holding them. And it's really the same concept when you're training an animal to, to hunt, you slowly warm them up to the idea. Um, you start out with a dead rat or dead raccoon and drag it around, let the puppy or young dog play with it and get used to the smell and get used to the idea of finding and catching that animal. And you just slowly build their confidence until, you know, they're, they're hunting. So anyway, it's not really something I could go into detail in this setup. I mean, it's just really, um, <laughs> it's really long and detailed. Um, um, Jose, thank you for the five dollars. He asked, "Hey Joseph, do you ever do all the? Would you ever do uh, top five videos of your links on categories like friendliness, prey drive, and swimmers?" So Jose asked if I would do a top five on different categories for my mink. So which one's the best swimmer? Which one's the best hunter? Things like that. I don't think I'd ever do a video like that. That would be really complex. I, first off, I'm not sure what where I would list each mink in each category. I don't know. That's kind of an interesting idea, but I don't know. Um, I'd have to think about that. Um, well, how do you say that? R R Hed Hedry? Mr. Hedry or Miss Hedry, if, if it's a 
lady. Thank you for the $2. I appreciate it. I'm sorry. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but I do appreciate the $2. I think it's there's euro, euros, what do you call it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, it might be euros. Oh, the two, the two units of monetary exchange, <laughs> whatever it is. Thank you. Um, Can you say rat wage is the best? Is that how you say it? What? Someone said, could you say rat wage is the best? I have no idea what that is, love. Anyway, I've said it. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, can you say so-and-so is the best? Yeah. Oh, oh, I got it. I, I don't know if you guys, can you guys hear Maggie, by the way, when she's talking? Can you guys hear her? Sorry, I got it shaking again. Yes, you guys. So you guys can hear Maggie when she's talking in the background. Okay, good. Okay. Um, do you think Boss could take a Wolverine? I don't want to find out. <laughs> no interest in answering that question. She is a little quiet. Yeah, but let me move over a little closer to her. Leia, yeah. I gotta sit where you're sitting, sweet girl. Go outside. Outside. Leia, yeah, outside. 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 Um, no. So we do have to occasionally purchase meat to, um, well, depending on the time of year, it's more than occasionally, but we do have to purchase meat to, to tie over the mink and dogs. Uh, we don't catch enough at rats or other animals to, to, uh, feed everything that we have. Thanks, Roseanne, for the five dollars. She asked, "If you had to give up pink or dogs for the rest of your life, which would you give up?" Oh, geez, don't ask me that kind of question. <laughs> That's like saying, "Which is your favorite kid?" Um, <laughs> am I frozen on your end? Um, yeah, do you do? You do look frozen. I wonder what happened here. Is this your phone or is this our connection? Do you look frozen to you? Yeah. Um, let me see. Maybe you pressed something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe changing the camera angle will help. Ah, uh, huh, G2 isn't responding. Wait, should we? Uh oh. Yeah, we can still so they can still hear us, but like if I try to do anything to like refresh it, it says it's not responding. I wonder if we can arrow <gasps> four one. Well, they can still hear us. So I guess we can keep going and hopefully it resolves itself. Because okay, I don't want to stop it. Because then we're probably gonna have to do another. Okay. Um... Do I find it easier to train male or female dogs? I prefer female dogs overwhelmingly over male dogs. Um, there's a whole list of reasons. None of it really has to do with ease of training. I don't know if they can still hear me, though. I'm not seeing any new questions. <laughs> YouTube isn't responding. Wait. Uh, do restart, I guess. What's your favorite season? Winter. Are you seeing your comments or no? No. Nope. Yeah, I think it's my phone. Let me see. Because uh, your phone is, you can see the comments come in. Cool, guys. It let me resume. I don't know what that was about, but we, fortunately, YouTube is far enough to have an option to just click back into the one you were on. So apologize for all of that. Um, no, they're still not. People. Can hear you? It's loading. Yeah, I think they can hear me. Oh, they can hear you now. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> um, see what super chats I missed because there were some super chats going on, love. Okay, there was a Majin, I believe. Think you could, thanks for the $10 Scandinavian dollars, I believe. Think you could do a roll call video of all the mink in the rotation. Their individual profile strengths, weaknesses, their specialities, etc. A bit, I mean, maybe, just an idea. Yeah, that would be cool to do a little uh, introduction of each mink really quick on their strengths and weaknesses. I, I could see doing that. 
Um, oh, some people are still. Some people are still behind. Yeah. Was Big Ben able to successfully hunt rock chucks? No, we haven't been able to do any successful rock chuck hunting with uh, mink. I've tried it a few times, and it just didn't. Mink were not interested. They came in and came back out again. Said no thanks. That thing's too big. <laughs> That's what happened with adult nutria. If you guys have seen that video of our nutria hunt down in the south, um, if it was a small, excuse me, if it was a small nutria, the mink just went and killed it. No problems. Let me switch this. Sorry guys. If it was a small nutria, the mink just went in and killed it. No problem. It was just as easy or easier than a muskrat. But the big ones. Uh, hit live volume there's something wrong with the volume can you guys hear me i heard a comment that made it questionable whether you could hear me or not um yeah they can hear you okay good sorry wilderness wonders gave five dollars i said dude congratulations can't wait for you to come hacking with us again we definitely go to go with your dogs oh time. wilderness wonders i'm pretty sure that's um 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 Oh my gosh, my brain's not working. Jason. Um, Hi, Jason. Anyway, um, Rachel and uh, sent $5.50. Thank you for the money. That was kind. Um, okay, it looks like everybody can see you. And yeah, everyone can see and hear me now. Um, any other questions that you can find, love? When we see more videos of Lammy hunting grass. <laughs> yeah, that those videos would get pretty... Oh, let's discuss Lammy. There was a, several reoccurring comments on my video when we showed Lammy, and they thought she was locked in this, like, little corner of the yard. It's kind of funny that people jump to weird conclusions. Lammy, right now, because it's winter, she is uh, in our garden area. But she has the whole length of the yard. It's skinny. It's kind of like a hallway, but it's long. So she can run back and forth. And that's where she lives um, in the winter while the grass is not growing. And then during the summer and spring and fall, so like, you know, 70% of the year, she's running around the whole half acre yard grazing grass. But right now there's no grass growing. So if we left her out there, the, the grass would all be chewed down to dirt. So she's living in our garden area, which is quite large but it's skinny. So you guys just saw that little corner end of her enclosure. She's got the whole length of the yard. She can run up and down. Anyway, um, Lammy's doing good. I don't really know what videos we could do on Lammy. She's, she doesn't do much. She just says bad, eats grass. If she has babies, uh, we can show milking her and like show the babies and stuff. So yeah, definitely. Um, we'll show some more videos on Lammy if she can uh, successfully have babies this year. Last year she missed. So she didn't, she didn't have any. Um, someone's asking me about, am I considering getting a new dog? I'm actually working on it. Um, and it, we'll be putting a video up in Vimeo pretty soon here discussing um, one of the options. And I will put a, a YouTube video eventually, but we're going to wait till we actually have made a decision and or about, <laughs> before we give into details about that, um, the new dog. Um I think you're doing good. Um, Vila is nothing happened to Vila. She's actually out swimming in the pond right now. Um, I use her for caching and for very specific situations when I need a really tight mink, uh, really I have a really tight hole and need a really small mink. So you'll see Vila from time to time. Right, right now she's out swimming in the pond. It's her her rotation to be in the pond area um, right now. She loves it. She's a, she's a wild little cuss. You walk up to her in the pond and she goes flying in, dives in the pond and goes hiding, hiding the underwater tunnel. <laughs> she's so silly. Uh, is Spot related to Brock? No. Brock and Spot are not related. Do you still have that snapping turtle? I do not have any snapping turtles, no. I haven't had one for, for several years. You can't really have them here in Utah um, without special licenses or whatever, you can't have snapping turtles. So I haven't had a snapping turtle for many years. Um, I, I like to go catch them and stuff when I go down to visit uh, my family in the Midwest. 
but um but no i haven't had um a snapping turtle no i don't have a raccoon i've never well i just shouldn't say never i haven't had a raccoon since i was a little kid there was a video where we showed a raccoon like months ago but that was not my raccoon um raccoons are cool though i kind of wish i could have one but they're complicated to keep in utah um, yeah, it's dark for us. People are asking oh, if we yeah. can go see the, if they can see the pond. Right yeah, now. it's all pitch dark out there. Sorry, guys. Black Mamba, I guess you guys missed the memo on that. So Black Mamba, I've got a whole video about Black Mamba and what happened to her. Um, Let's not talk about it. We're not going to talk movie. about it. So I will be posting a link in the description below when we're done with this video that will show... Uh, answer the question what happened to black mamba and i'll also be putting that other link um going straight to the video where uh vila it, it, my vimeo video where vila goes excuse me not vila <laughs> where uh uh my gosh what is your name dog leia <laughs> leia goes down the pipe and grabs the raccoon i'll put the link to both of those videos in the description below um, what was that? Uh, Jose said, congratulations on the success. It's a treat to have you live, go live with us today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Jose. $5. We appreciate the $5 and the kind words. Thank you. Oh, this is a question everybody asks. How does your neighbor, how does your neighbor feel about the links? Oh, our neighbors. And what do they think about our little crazy operation? So, um, our neighbors, as far as we know, absolutely love us. Um, one thing you have to realize, our neighbors have like horses and goats and cows and chickens and like way more wild stuff than us, like, or at least bigger. <laughs> um, so like us having mink is not that big of a deal when the other neighbors have chickens and cows and goats and horses. So yeah, also, like, the ones they see, the houses that are behind our lot, they are, like, another town. Yeah, and so the house, are, the part of our neighborhood that you see is not our neighborhood. So the stuff behind our fence is not related to us in any way, shape, or form. They have a totally different – so we're zoned for livestock on our side of, of the fence and our whole road. Like, people have – there's, like, a sign – going into the next neighborhood that literally says, please don't ride your horse through our neighborhood. Like that's, it's a totally different neighborhood. Um, so yeah, we don't have anything to do with as them. As we know, they also like us. Oh, they? then as far as, as far as what the neighbors think. So the neighbors love us because whenever they have pest control problem, we walk over and do it for free. Um, so we, we're good neighbors. We catch their rats. We catch their raccoons. We catch their skunks. We catch, you know, whatever problems they're having. We've, we actually removed a lot this summer, a lot of raccoons that were bothering chickens and eating sweet corn they were growing in their yards and, uh, you know, causing all kinds of problems. So we got, I think it was like a half a dozen raccoons we removed from the neighborhood this year, um, maybe more. And then a bunch of rats. There was, there was neighbors that were having rats getting in their engines or their cars to nest and getting in their chicken coops. We actually just barely did a rat run in the, in the, in the neighborhood where we helped multiple neighbors get rid of their rats. So yeah, the neighbors love us cause yeah, we, we're always here to help. So, um, skunks, we keep, we try and keep the dogs away from skunks. They are not allowed to, to mess with skunks. And if they do, they get in trouble and they know that. So yeah, if, if they have a skunk problem, we use traps. Whoops. Sorry about that guys. Uh, Mark Chang, Chang, uh, he donated uh, five dollars. Thanks, Mark, for the five dollars. He said, "Heard your microchip this year's leader. How does that work for telling them apart at all? So if it's an obvious answer." So we didn't put collars on the baby mink this year. We microchipped them. Um, so we have a little scanner that we scan the mink to know which mink is which, and it's a lot better. Um, than having the collars because the collars would break, would come off occasionally. You always have to worry about them creating a sore on their neck, weird things like that. Collars uh, getting tangled and stuff. So the microchips are a lot safer. They are less convenient in that you don't know which mink is which until you scan it. I mean, you start to kind of tell them apart, but it's not. It's pretty hard to do it perfectly um, when they're all the same color, you know. But um, 
yeah, you just have to scan them. So that part is inconvenient, but the fact that we didn't have to constantly be checking their collars was a lot more convenient. We might end up putting their collars on again, actually, now that they're finished growing, just for hunting so we know which mink is which. We'll see what happens. Um, Wade Hatch, uh, thanks for the $5. He said, have you ever thought about making a family tree of all of your mink? Yeah, actually, oh, I need to finish that. I'm so sorry, guys. So I've created, <laughs> I've created online using a dog. So they've got a dog. Uh, pedigrees online thing that I that you can go on to and just create pedigrees and I've using the dog website created pedigrees for my mink but I haven't finished it I needed to finish it and so I kind of I kind of got that project mostly done actually a good friend of mine helped me with the majority of the work and then I needed to just go in and polish it off and I never got around to it so I'm going to try and do that and then I'll give you guys access to the pedigrees so you guys can fly through and you could see, you know, what minks related to who and um, all of that. I just, I, I, sorry, I haven't finished it. And so I haven't made it public because it's not done yet. Um, what was your question? Power Direct University, Director University. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. The questions fly pretty fast through here. Um Do I purposely breed the mink that are the better hunters? Yes, I do. Oh, has a dog ever bit one of the minks by mistake? Nope. Um, I don't know if ever is the right word, but it's not a problem. The dogs are very good at knowing um, who the mink are. Like, they can tell before we know what's coming out of the hole. So we'll be sitting there, and the dogs will have their face down in the hole, digging, trying to grab rats, and they'll all of a sudden stop and back up, and I know exactly what's going to happen next. The mink stick their head out of the hole. So they know the mink are coming and they respect the mink. They know the mink will bite them. They're obviously not afraid of being bitten because they hunt rats and raccoons all the time, right? But they know that they can't retaliate or at least not supposed to. And um, so they just avoid getting bitten and they, you know, they'll run from the mink even though they'd kill a raccoon that could, could, is way bigger and more mean than the mink. But they know they're not allowed to hurt the mink, so they, they respect them 100%. Um, Howard Director, University, uh, thanks for the $5. Yeah, thanks for the $5. Sorry, I, I didn't see the question. Are there any other ones that are missing? Uh, no, we're up. Okay. Um, Where are the dogs and mink that they came after? You can show the oh, dogs. Oh, I can show the dogs. That, let's see. Um, well, here it is. So I want to see the dogs again. I'm going to flip the camera. And there's the packages we opened. There's Shirni stretched out. There's Boss right there. Boss, look up, buddy. Boss, boss, boss. Look up. There you go. There's Boss. <laughs> and here's Leia. She's moved up to the couch. Leia, there she is. Everyone's lazing around, sleeping right now. There she is. There's Leia Dog. And there's my beautiful wife. Yeah, I'll switch back. The mink are outside. Um, Boone, I could bring Boone in. But Boone um, is, is ready to eat dinner right now. So he's super <laughs> hyper right now. So I didn't bring him in. He's ready to go eat. Soon I'm done, done with this, I'm going to go trade. I'm uh, going to go train him. Um, sorry, whoever missed Raptor, I've already taken him out and shown him. Um, what was that um, money? Rob, Question? thanks for the five Canadian dollars. He's, he says, been watching since 2018. Congrats from Northern Canada. And what was his name, Rob? Yeah. Thanks for the five dollars, Robert. Or Rob, sorry, I like change your name for you. <laughs> I assume your name's Robert, but maybe you don't like to go by that. Thanks, Rob. Did and he he just said he's been around since two thousand eighteen. Eighteen. Oh wow, awesome. Yeah, I wonder how many people. Lincoln Shepherd YouTube channel. Would you consider mating Shirni? I'm not sure. I've never heard of that. Hey, there's Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Chuck says Lily. Chuck's the guy who has Lily. Um. 
Thank you um, for the. Yeah, it's cool that we made it to a million. Huh? That's dark sands dark. Another Minkland video. Yeah, I can I can get out. We need to make one when there's snow on the ground. Um, Will you ever catch coyotes? coyotes? You know, that would be a Vimeo only if I do any any coyote situations. Coyotes are really cool. Um, there are situations when they need some population control. I don't do that on a regular basis, but I'm sure the, the situation will arise at some point. And if it does, that will definitely be a Vimeo only. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, we'll have it up on Vimeo if we ever do a coyote um, pest control or, or a fox. I don't know that we'd do a fox. Probably more likely to do a coyote, but um, is it dangerous to have the dogs hunt raccoons? Um, not really. I mean, raccoons are, are quite aggressive, of course, but I mean, my dogs know what they're doing. They're, they're hunting dogs. Um, I wouldn't say it's dangerous. You would just use a gun for coyotes? I, it would just depend on the situation. Um how we ended up doing it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if you guys, if I ever do a coyote video, I'll let you know it's over there on Vimeo. You can, you can watch it. Um, have you gotten a chance to see demolition ranches video? So yeah, I've actually heard a lot about demolition ranch having rats. I have a buddy of mine contacting him right now. Um, the uh, one of the guys who um, on Aquascape, um, you set up our Aquascape ecosystem, is actually reaching out to him and um, going to to let him know that uh, we're potentially um, able to go help him. So anyway, so hopefully we'll be doing a, a collab with Demolition Ranch, but I don't know their situation what they've already done. I haven't talked to the guy and maybe he's not willing uh, to do one for all I know. I mean, who knows? So anyway, I'm going to try and do one with demolition ranch. I think is what it's called. I honestly didn't even know who he was until he had his rat problem. And a bunch of people told me, Hey dude, look it up. Um, like and shepherd project. I'll, I'll see if I can look into that. Um, yeah, I know that mink are susceptible to COVID-19. We actually talked about it in the beginning of the video. Um, first time I watched your videos, you, you were shooting rats in the shed with the air gun years ago. That oh, was your buddy. That, was that yeah, that Cade, Cade used a, a little air rifle to shoot some rats once in one video, like five years ago, 10 years ago. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not very efficient and it's a little bit sketchy. So we don't, we don't typically use guns. I've got one where I, I pulled out a rifle and shot a muskrat that was in a situation that we couldn't get him. He was out in a big lake and we were in the country. So I pulled out my 22 mag and, and popped it, but I didn't make a video of it. And it's not something I do very often. Honestly, most of the places I, I hunt, I couldn't use a gun if I wanted to. So it's, it's not really that tempting any, either way. Um, is Lammy pregnant? We, we won't know till she has a lamb. I'm not going to really, I'm probably not going to preg test her. It doesn't knowing early is not going to change anything. So, uh, either she is or she isn't. So hopefully she's pregnant. She got a really good solid breed, solid breed with, with uh, pinky. So fingers crossed. We'll have little lammies, um, uh, this spring. So yeah i don't know how covid's affected my business it's hard to say um we've we've managed to run out of rats in some of our big big ratting locations but i don't know that, that has anything to do with covid so um what's the biggest thing a mink could kill without too much risk of injury i don't know probably a muskrat i mean obviously birds but I mean, it's a bird, but yeah, they can kill like a goose or a heron or a swan. That'd be probably the biggest, but I mean, what are they going to do? Tickle them with their feathers. People think geese are scary. <laughs> they're choke, man. They're not scary at all. They're 
freaking armless. They have dull beaks, dull claws, and they'll just like tickle you with their feathers trying to act tough. So yeah, geese and geese and um and swans, I would say is the biggest thing that a mink could could catch um without it being dangerous. And then if you're talking mammals, I don't know, like a baby nutria or a baby beaver would probably be the biggest thing, but then we're talking like a baby animal. So I, I, I don't know, like an adult animal, probably a muskrat, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, people are so afraid of Canadian geese. It's a joke, man. Go out there. <laughs> I know he's not watching, but I had a good buddy named Cade that we raised. Uh, I raised. I don't know why I worded it that way. That's a way, weird, weird way to word it. <laughs> but Cade came out with me all the time. He was just a little guy. He was like 13 or 14 or 12 or something when he first started coming out with me. Just a little guy. Now he's huge. He's like makes me look like a little shrimp. Well, I'm not that tall. I'm only five five. But um he's a big tall guy. But when he was a little guy, he'd come out with me and he was scared of birds. Um, what's the best way to find a lurcher breeder? Where are you located, lurcher gentleman? Um so anyway, I I taught Cade how to not be scared of geese. I we caught a, a domestic goose. It was in a problem area, and um, he he was scared of it. I'm like, dude, come here. Give me your hand. And I stuck his hand in the beak. I'm like, look, does that hurt? He's like, no. I'm like, here, give me your other, give me your arm. And then I scratched him with the goose claws, which are dull. You know, I'm like, does that hurt? He's like, no. Then I took it with the wing, and I whacked him in the face with it a couple times. Does that hurt? He's like, no. I'm like, why are you scared of it? He can't hurt you, man. <laughs> anyway. Cute little kid. He's such a cute little kid. Now he's big, tall, he's tough, tough man. Yeah. Big, tall, <laughs> tough he, man. He looks like so rugged. That villain in Heroes. What's his name? Oh, I forget. Anyway, it's it, it's fun remembering when Cade was a little guy. Omar, he he gave us a hundred. Oh, what is that? Dop. I don't know. And he says, "Bendiciones para ti y tu familia." Gracias. Oh, gracias. ¿Cuál, cuál fue su nombre? Omar. Omar, gracias, Omar. Um, oh, we've already talked about COVID. I don't want to go into that again. Sorry. Um, Do the mink ever bite you? Yes. Yes, mink love to bite. And me. <laughs> they bite everyone. Um, yeah, sorry. If you rewatch this, Lucas, when the when it's no longer live, uh, we we go into that. Um, we talk about COVID a little bit with Mink. Um, did that lurcher guy ask his question again um, or answer? Oh, no, dude, swans cannot break your neck or your arm. I'm sorry. That is an old wives tale. They cannot, they would have to hit you just right in a very small, 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 fragile bone to maybe fracture it. Geese and Swans cannot cause any sort of serious injury to you at all unless they hit you in a very vulnerable spot, like maybe your eye. I mean, but seriously, a, a mouse can hurt you if they hit you in the eye. Um, swans and geese, that whole they will break your arm story is complete and utter nonsense. It is not true. Unless you're the size of a freaking rat, they are not dangerous at all. I'm sorry. You, you're just, you've heard wives' tales. It's not true. Um, the someone said a money chat again. What did they say? Uh, I can't see it. My my chat closed. I don't know. Maybe, oh, maybe I can see it on the phone. See if you can see it on the phone. Um, two devious. He says I'm from Nevada, Nevada. Oh, that's the guy looking for the lurcher, Nevada guy. So, um, thank you for the money again. Sorry, I didn't intend for you to. Anyway. Yeah, if you want to find a lurcher, um, oh, what's the best way I can get a hold of this guy? Really, we should just chat about what you're looking for. Um, how do I get you in contact with me without getting a... Um, let's see. Um, Send you a Cameron, message. if you don't mind posting... Oh... I hate to make you, I hate to ask you to put no, your information um, out there. Just have them reach you to your Instagram. Oh, go on my Instagram. Cameron, I, I think was the guy asking about the lurcher. No, Do you, too devious. Too devious. Oh, sorry. 
Cameron is someone else. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused here. If you can send me a, a question on my um, my Instagram asking about the lurchers, I can talk to you one on one and we can we can work something out. So if you don't have Instagram, message me now and say, hey dude, I don't have Instagram or, or whatever. But um So yeah, just just send me a question on on um, on Instagram. When is Lammy having a baby? If she is, um, I don't know. Um, I'd have to go do the math, and I've got it all in my phone. Like I just haven't done the math yet to see when she's due, because uh, we know when she bred. So I should I should be able to calculate it pretty simple. Um, I just haven't yet. So, um, do the mink ever just? Do dogs ever mistake the mink for rats? No, not that I've seen. I mean, once I've seen a puppy do it once and she very learned quickly learned that was not a good idea. I mean, it's just not a problem. Dogs are really, they, they can tell when it's a mink before we can tell they're very, um, they're very good. I don't know if it's smell, if it's sight, if it's hearing my assumption, it's all three senses. They can smell hear, and see that it's a mink and they back off because you got to realize they're hearing, they can pick up sounds that we can't even begin to detect and details of sounds that we cannot even begin to detect, let alone their sense of smell, which we can't even comprehend because our sense of smell is useless. And then they can see things as well. So, I mean, they're just really good at knowing when it's a mink and they, they, they know to respect the mink. Uh, when are we doing another big ratting job? We will be doing another big ratting job when we find a big ratting job to do. All of the big ratting jobs that we used to have are rat free or close to it. So we don't have, we need to find some new locations and we're working at it pretty hard. Oh, thank you, love. You're I needed that. Yeah. Talking for minutes. Oh, we missed the super chat Cameron's oh. telling me about. Oh. Mark said, Are you are the young minks still being housed together? Yes, so far we have the young mink split into two different groups. Um, is running out of rats a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing for the people with the rats. It's a bad thing for us because now we have to go find more rats. So, um, the, the mink, the young mink are being housed in two different groups, the bully group and the bullied group. So the ones that have been kind of roughed up by the other mink, we moved together into a separate enclosure. But other than that, they're all together. Um, the ones who are doing the bullying are the, the major group of young mink. And that consists of, I think, 12 individuals. And then the bullied mink, the ones that we moved out of there to pre prevent them from getting picked on, is seven. And that's all the, the baby mink from this year. Thanks, Danielle, for subscribing. Thanks, Danielle. Have you ever considered getting a different kind of must lid, like a Martin or Sable or something, all the time? That would be so cool. But it's legally complicated to have anything but a mink or a ferret. And I'm not super interested in ferrets. No offense to ferret people. It's just not. Um, I like learning about them, but I'm not um, not too excited to get one myself. Main reason is all of our ferrets that are locally available are just pet, really, really soft pet ferrets. The working breeds, um, I would have to pay a lot of money to ship them in and get a a specific working breed of ferret, but I'm, I'm just not super interested in that. Pretty much anything I would want to do with a, with a ferret, I can already do with a mink. I can't really think of much that I would want a ferret to accomplish that my mink can't already accomplish. I don't, I don't have big warrens of rabbits like over in the UK where having a ferret would be beneficial because the ferret's flushing instead of catching the rabbits. See, I don't really have that situation. So, so Yeah. Do I still have my dog Onsa? No, Onsa died a long time ago um, before we had any of the dogs that we had now. She passed away. She uh, got hit by a car in front of our house. So we were babysitting another dog and the dog taught her to jump out of the yard, to jump the fence and get out of the yard. And so 
she she jumped uh, she jumped the fence one day and got hit by a car, and she'd never jumped the fence before that. Um, and my I told my wife, oh no, actually that's not true. She jumped the fence once before that, and so I told Maggie, hey, watch your knee when you let her out. Be really careful because or did I say Shirney? I meant Onsa. I'm sorry. Watch Onsa when you let her out. Be careful because she's learned to get out of the fence. And so she said, okay. She let her out to go pee. And yeah, then for like two, looked like back out. And yeah, she just jumped the fence immediately. Anyway, yeah. it's it's just, we, we've That's talked about it in a past video. So sorry. Um, are there any other trainable animals besides mink and dogs that can hunt quite like mink or dogs? Oh yeah, I'm sure there's bunches of them. Mink are actually really, really hard to train. They're not trainable at all. You just have to be very stubborn and clever uh, to get mink to work. They're not. I wouldn't call them a very, very trainable animal. Do you um, have a hard time giving away mink? Seeing how quickly they reproduce. Yeah, mink don't reproduce very easily or quickly. That's, just <laughs> I just have a bunch. I am reasonably good at it because I've learned from the experts, from the mink farmers. And so I know how to do it, and um, I only breed, you know, once a year. Um, where, which group is Boone in? <laughs> Boone is on his own. Boone doesn't isn't part of the group. I removed Boone um, when he was little and raised him separately from the other mink. So if I put him with the other mink, they would all attack him, or he would attack them. So he can't be around any of the other mink. How is Raptor and he's... And is the project continuing to succeed? Yeah, there's nothing really to uh, announce with Raptor. He's, uh, it's winter, so there isn't much we could do with him. So I just, I, I showed him earlier. So if you haven't seen the Raptor part, um, come back, come, yeah. come back and watch this video once it's no longer live and it's, it's the recorded version. You can see Raptor run around the, uh, the room and catch, um, catch some dubias and stuff. Uh, would I ever own a, a cat? I would like the idea of getting like a bobcat, but they're legally complicated in my state to own anything other than a plain Jane house cat. It's really complicated. Um, if I could get some kind of really wild feral cat like they have down in Australia or something, that'd be kind of cool. But as far as I could tell, all the feral cats here are just like recently feral. They're not that exciting. Yeah, Wild cats interest me. Domestic cats, not so much. Betty Thank you for the $5. Thanks, Betty Boop. She said, love your channel and family. What is the uh, life of a hunting mink? One million subs. Average life of a mink. Okay, so in the wild, mink, uh, you know, most wild animals die their first year. That's just the fact of life, regardless of what they are, whether it's a deer or an elk or an elephant or a mouse. I mean, almost all animals die their first year of life. But if the mink manages to survive its first year, which is the most difficult, um, they could potentially live up to three, maybe four years old in the wild. That's, you know, maybe five if they got really, really, really lur lurky, or lucky, excuse me. Um, but four or five years is pretty much the max. Uh, three is more realistic max for a wild mink. Um, now in captivity, Mink can live up to eight, nine, ten years old if everything goes right. But mink are a small animal that very easily get themselves into trouble. They can get sick, they can get injured, um, they can get lost. So, like as far as how long they actually live uh, with me, or, or, or it doesn't have to be me, but, but with anyone um, who's keeping a mink, it, it's probably not going to be their whole life expectancy. Because there's a good chance something will go wrong, whether it's injury, illness, or escape. There's a there's a reasonable chance that one of those things will take place before they die of old age. Um, so but like you, you Missy, for example, years. Missy, she lived to age seven. I lost her well over half a dozen times, but I always managed to get her back. One time I lost Missy for an entire like three weeks. It was like almost a month. And she ran around the neighborhood killing rats and bringing them back to her cage and hiding them in a wood pile near her cage. But because they were in the wood pile, I never noticed them. Then one day we, we moved some wood and I'm like, hey, there's a dead rat. This rat's been killed by a mink. What the heck? But Missy had been gone for several weeks, so I didn't think it was her. I was just like confused. So then one day I, uh, I had a little rat, live rat in a cage and it squeaked. 
it was like squeaking at me. Sometimes rats are really aggressive. They'll like squeak at you through the cage. Anyway, I was walking with it in this little live trap and it was squeaking at me. Meep, 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 meep. And this mink comes running out of the bushes. And I was like, oh, my mink's loose because because I had a different, you know, I had more than just Missy. So I thought, which mink is loose? And so I caught it and I'm looking at all the cages and all the cages are full. And I'm like, what the crap? Where'd this mink come from? Then I looked down. And I'm like, oh, it's Missy. <laughs> She'd been gone for almost a month. Anyway, she died of old age at age seven years old, if I remember right. But I literally lost that mink at least half a dozen times. Um, she was a she was a wild little cuss, but she always came back, or I got lucky and found her. Um, but yeah, so uh, sorry, that's a long answer to your question. But oh yeah, so there's a lot of mink that I don't keep for their whole lives that um, I'll move on to a new owner if they're not working out for our program. Um, we'll, we'll allow someone else that we trust to, to take them and, and use them for hunting or has, have them as a pet or whatever their, their goal is. Um, yeah, we need to do a Raptor update video. We kind of did one here with the live event. So, so like I said, those people that are just tuning in, Rewatch this live event. What see what you missed because we did do a raptor video, but I'll try and get another one up before too long. Um, is there anything else we're missing, love? Um, let's see. Whatever moved to another state. Oh man, I love the state of Utah. I've lived in a lot of places. Um, I've lived in Illinois, Missouri. Iowa, Nebraska, Idaho, Utah. I think that's it. And I've also lived in the country of Denmark for a couple of years as a little kid. And I lived in Costa Rica for like a couple months. What, baby? Uh, that's what I said. Oh, yeah. And I lived in Costa Rica for a couple of months. So I've lived in a lot of different places. And I absolutely love Utah. Utah is, it's not, you know, the ideal place, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to beat, really. It's hard to beat. Um, the people are really cool and relaxed for the most part. Like, it's, um, the climate is awesome. Like, so you have both winters and summers. It's not one of those, like, super, super, super mild places. I don't like lack of seasons like i like having a winter and a fall and a spring and a summer i like having all four seasons so i like that but it's not really harsh where i live in the valley it doesn't get that cold we typically don't get a ton of snow when it is cold it doesn't stay frozen too hard too long usually there's obviously cold winters and and mild winters but most winters are are relatively mild the summers are usually relatively mild though um that's not always the case. They're relatively mild. Anyway, I like the Utes. I like the weather. I like the people. Um, I like the, there's so much things to hunt here. There's raccoons, there's muskrats and the laws here in some ways are annoyingly strict, like really annoyingly strict. Like when it comes to owning anything exotic or wild, they're really, really strict about, but when it comes to hunting, they're really, really lenient like muskrats, raccoons, skunks, um, there's a whole list of animals, not that I hunt skunks, but I'm just saying there's a whole list of animals that you can hunt um, um, in Utah without a season, without licenses, and it's just it's just really relaxed. Someone said they were scared of Utah. For, um, afraid of being a very small minority in here. Being a minority, minority. in Utah. I've, I've um, been a minority in here. Maggie's been a, a minority her whole life in Utah. Well, not whole life, but since most 12. of her life since she was 12 in Utah. What's it like being a minority in Utah, Maggie? Um, it's fine. I should <laughs> switch it so I could see you. Um, it's, it's Whoa, fine. sorry. My finger's in the way. So what's it like? Whoa, sorry, guys. Wow. Uh, here, I want to. I got it. I got it. <laughs> feel weird. Um, no, it's, it's fine. I mean... There's not that many Latinos for sure as other places, but it's yeah, there fine. are. There's lots of Latinos now. In there is. I mean, growing up when, oh. when I was in school, I I didn't see that many. It was hard, but I don't know. I just cope with it. I I feel like people are really nice. <laughs> they're really nice. They're really friendly. 
um, there was a time that I didn't spoke like didn't speak English very well, and kids were still talk to me even though I I didn't understand. They're really nice. So anyway, that's my that's my take on um, being a minority here. Though I'm seeing more people moving here, so that maybe in the future it'll be more, you know, diverse. Diverse, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's what it's like being a minority in Utah. I've been a minority several times in my life, believe it or not, because <laughs> I've lived in Latin America where I was a minority. That was a short time. I've been on the Indian Reservation where I was a minority, um, and I've been in other parts of America, the United States where I was a minority there. So I, I, um, yeah, anyway, I don't know what it's like in Utah, though, so. <laughs> ask Maggie because I'm a, I'm the majority here. Most most people in Utah are, are Caucasian or Latino. Um, oh, is are we LDS? Are we part of the the LDS or Mormon mm -hmm. faith? Um, yes, we are uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Um, as a uh, slang, people call us Mormons, and that's fine. But um, yeah, we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <clears throat> Someone wants to see the bump. Should I show them? Do you want to see what? My baby bump. <laughs> if you want to. I guess. <laughs> okay. Do you have a bunch of them? Oh. Uh, it's just a shirt. Here, let me switch camera here. People want to see Maggie's baby bump. Yeah, just this. She's got a little baby bump. Yeah, it's a little hidden behind my chub, but... <laughs> But yeah. Can you see it well? Yeah, I, I switched back. But yeah. Um, something about El Salvador. Oh, yeah. Maggie's from El Salvador. That's in Central America. It's south of Mexico for people who are geographically challenged, which I am in certain parts of the world. Definitely Europe. I have no idea where anything is in Europe. I just know North and South America and... Uh, some parts of Africa I'm familiar with. Um, so yeah, Maggie's from El Salvador, Central America. Um, yeah, we, it's a girl. So I'm gonna ask you. Yeah, it's a girl. Her name is, we, we announced her name earlier, so you guys missed it. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Can we see Boone at your knee? Um, I already showed the dogs a couple times. Boone's in his... Uh, he's waiting for, for uh, dinner, so I didn't get Boone out because he's really rambunctious right now. Um, okay, following... Thank you, DK, for the $10. I've been following for years. Congrats on the $1 million. Give Shirni a pat on the head for me. Such a fantastic dog. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Any exotic animals from Central America that interest you? Yeah, there's some. Uh, there's a couple different mustelids, members of the weasel family down in Central America that I think would be cool to check out. Um, I cannot remember either of their names. One's like a grizzon or something like that. It's kind of like a badger type mustelid. And there's another one that's kind of like a Fisher Martin. Uh, I'm sorry, like I, I haven't studied them that much and I, there isn't much information out on them. But there's two different members of the Weedle family that intrigued me down there. Also, what's just kind of cute and cool are, are um, those little uh, – they're in the raccoon family. What are they called? Oh, my brain's not working. Um, not a bush baby. A kinkajou. Kinkajous are pretty interesting or pretty cute, but I don't – you can't really hunt. Um, Did we see kinkajous at the rescue place? Yeah, they were, they were sleeping though. Oh, yeah. Oh, someone said that you didn't say the name of oh. her baby. They're like, what's her name though? Oh, what's the baby's name? You guys wanna know? You should <laughs> you should have you should have watched earlier. <laughs> Era Barbara. What? Someone said Era Barbara. <laughs> Barbara, nope. How do you guys handle the pandemic? Nothing's really changed for pandemics. Kudamundis are interesting. I hear they're pretty aggressive. I've never, I've never even seen one that I remember anyway. Okay. 
When will you give Boone his dinner? After we're done, I'll feed Boone. I gotta go do a training with him. Yeah, we're probably gonna we'll go do, until I'll, eight. I'll go do some caching training. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up here pretty soon. And then we'll do cash. I'm gonna go do caching training with Boone and a few other things. Um, oh, the baby's name is Galilee, by the way. That's her name, Galilee. All righty. Yeah, I know. I, I Let's see. Pine Martins would be really cool. I actually found a Pine Martin breeder here in the United States. I just got to talk my fish and wildlife and allowing me to actually own one and use it for hunting. Pine Martins have actually, over there in Europe, they've shown to drastically reduce or even eliminate the populations of gray squirrels that are American gray squirrels that are taken over in, in parts of the UK. Um, the pine marten have shown to drastically reduce or completely remove them from the environment. So that just shows they must be flipping good hunters on, on our native, native squirrels here. We actually have a non-native species of squirrel as well that's taking over. It's called the fox squirrel. Eastern fox squirrel has been taking over Utah and some of the other western states. Um, so we don't know how it got here. There's lots of theories, but it um, was likely – there is um, some documentation of people bringing them here, and they assume that's how they got here. But anyway, these eastern fox squirrels are taking over. It would be kind of cool to get something like a pine marten to help control their numbers. And um, But we'll see. I'd have to talk the DNR into making that possible because right now it's not, it's not an option, legally speaking. I mean, I could get one, maybe not a pine martin, but I could get an American martin, but they wouldn't let you do anything with it. You'd have to just keep it in a cage, and I don't have any interest in just getting one for fun and locking it up. That's just not my, my thing. Have you thought about hunting with red, red foxes? Yeah, man, that would be cool. Uh, I can do red foxes actually pretty easily, legally speaking. Um, I'd love to do it. Um, maybe I'll probably do a fox at some point. I would assume have it join our ratting team. That'd be pretty cool. Um, Are you going to visit your favorite brother in South Korea? <laughs> <laughs> Nephi. Nephi. My oh, brother Nephi. In, in here he's wearing a Warren. Warren piece. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My brother Nephi is um, spamming us in here. Um, I don't know if we'll go to Korea or not to visit you, Nephi. I'd like that, but we'll see what happens. We'll come visit you in, in the Midwest when you come visit our parents. How about that? Um, How much is a Vimeo stuff? Vimeo? Yeah. Is uh, $4 a month. $3.99. $3.99 a month. How is Gremlin? Oh. Did we talk about that in YouTube or just? Yeah. They know, so I'm guessing oh yeah, we've already doing, yeah. Fine. Oh, how's Gremlin doing? Yeah, she's doing good. She's uh, living it up. I um, yeah, there's nothing really to talk about her. Yeah, she's hunting yeah, foxes. Gremlin's hunting foxes in the east east coast. How old is Boone? Oh, he'd be what six months now. He was born May fourteenth. May, June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, he's he's almost seven months. Thanks, I'm Oh, actually, Irish. it's already the 14th, so yeah, he's seven months old. Thanks, Irish Tech Girl. She said congratulations. Thanks, Irish Tech Girl. Um, no update on Shirney's protection training. We've discontinued that for the time being just due to time constraints and then COVID. So we'll get back on that later. Um, how well can mink climb? They can climb reasonably well. I mean, they're not like a squirrel. They can't like fly all over the treetops, but they can get up a tree kind of like a cat, I guess, kind of like an awkward, slow ambling climb. They're able to climb up and down trees, but they're nowhere near like the ability of a squirrel. Hmm. All righty. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up tonight. We very much appreciate you joining us. Um, 
if there's any other questions that we missed on the super chat, do we have any super chat? Mm, so no, we missed. I, I think we're up to date. Okay. So a lot of the questions that I'm getting, sorry that the questions do fly really fast. So if I missed your question, I apologize. But a lot of the questions we've been getting are um, earlier in the video we already discussed. So once this video is no longer live and it's, you know, just recorded on YouTube, you can go back and um, rewatch this. And a lot of those questions about like Raptor and uh, Boone and a, a few others that are repeating, um, you'll be able to see the questions too. Um, have I ever done any trapping? I do occasionally do some trapping when necessary, but I don't make a habit of doing very much of it. Um, so yeah, anyway, appreciate you guys for watching our show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this wasn't too boring. Uh, thanks, Chuck. Good old Chuck. Make another comment on there. Um, Chuck's the guy who has Lily. Oh, here's a funny story. I got to tell you this. So Chuck took Lily to the vet just for a checkup or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was just a routine checkup. He took her to the vet, and the veterinarian looks at her and says, man, she looks a lot like this dog I saw on YouTube. And he kind of chuckles. He's like, well, she did used to be on YouTube. And she's like, yeah, this guy who hunts rats had had a dog. It looked a lot like that. And he's like, yep, that's her actually. <laughs> So it's pretty funny. The veterinarian actually recognized uh, Lily when Chuck took her into the vet. Isn't that funny? So yeah. Vas a decir la historia de cat food? No, <laughs> no, we're not gonna tell that story. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe so, another live chat. <laughs> Maybe. Alrighty, Bear's doing good. Someone asked how Bear's doing. He's doing good. Alrighty, guys. Well, we appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you guys. <laughs> War and PC knows exactly what story we're talking about. He's laughing his head off. <laughs> Chuck knows it. I'm surprised Chuck isn't on here laughing. Um, yeah, gray squirrels are aggressive. Yeah, we hunt a, a species of squirrel till we can tell the sick Maggie story. I don't remember that story, Chuck. Sick Maggie story. The sick Maggie story. That was Chuck? Yeah. Oh, I cannot think of Chuck, that. Chuck, I don't know what story you're talking about, Chuck. Um, sick Maggie story. Oh, that story. No, we're not telling that story I'm either, sorry. Chuck. I'm it's when you were... <laughs> No, we're not telling that story either. You guys, stop bringing up things. We, yeah, okay. Um, what was I saying? I was totally derailed there. I was trying to figure out what that sick baggy story was. Chad Woods. Homeless Joe. Oh, my gosh. We're getting spammed by my buddies and brothers here. Um, <laughs> th thanks for liking my laugh. I appreciate that. Um, oh, what was I saying? I was saying something. I was... I was um, Collab. Yeah, we got to do a Sean Woods collab, but we just got to figure out a time. Now is actually a good time since we've run out of rats. We've we've totally run out of rats, guys. Uh, I'll re let's retouch on that really brief. Some most oh, of the people missed that. Um. <laughs> so how old am I? I am. Don't laugh. I got to think about it. Uh, <laughs> Thirty. Well, my birthday's coming up, so. Let me think. Okay, I was born in 84. And I, my my birthday is December 20th, 1984. So what does that make me? Um, I will be turning 36 in a couple days. Is that right? Is 35. my math on? No, because 36. 34 is an even year. So it's 36. You're going to turn 36. You're 35 right now. And you're gonna be yeah, 36. yeah. So I'll be 36 in a few days. Um. No, 37, 38. Wow. No, I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm not an odd number. I know that because of, well, I'm 35 now, but I will be 36 in a few days. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> hashtag math. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I saw this meme the other day. It was this guy having an interview, a job interview. And it says, it says here that you're really fast at math. What's 19 times 37. And he says this number is like not even close. He's like 105. And he's like, that's not even close. He's like, 
I said I was fast at math. Didn't say I was good at math. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, um, sorry. Subscribe for more Joe jokes. <laughs> Subscribe for more Joe jokes. For more current corny, corny, <laughs> stupid jokes. Go watch the Mink Man when he runs out of things to say. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate your your subscribership. Um, whoa, what was that comment? He asked a question. What is reggae? Reg Do you know Reggie the Rat? Reggie the Rat. No, I don't. I don't know who Reggie the Rat is. Sorry. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, and um, you guys have a wonderful. Oh, oh, that's what I was about to describe. I knew there was something I was going to say. So. We have run out of rats. So we've got lots of little spots we can hit rats all day long. People call us and say, hey, we got two rats in our chicken coop or four rats on our wall or three under our back porch. But big, big, big rat jobs that we used to go and, and haul out a couple hundred rats in a day, all of those locations are pretty close to rat free. Like we have, we, we, we have a hard time finding a rat, let alone multiple rats. And the farmers say they haven't seen any for months, um, and if they and they've gone out with spotlights and everything. So, so those big locations, like the big feedlots, all those big feedlots that we were hitting, um, the pheasant farms that we were hitting, um, they're they're almost, if not completely, wiped out of rats. So we are looking in in the Salt Lake area, or an hour or two from the Salt Lake area. So not out of state, unfortunately, and not on the other side of our state, but somewhere within an hour or two from Salt Lake City, Utah um, area, we are looking to find some big, big rat places, uh, like a big feedlot, dairy, chicken farm, um, something where we can go out and get another two, three hundred, four hundred rats in a day um, instead of like, you know, five or six rats. So anyway... Um, just thought I'd let you know that's why we haven't had any big ratting videos. I did. I do have a, a spot I'm going to be checking out hopefully tomorrow. It's unfortunately a bit of a drive, but uh, it sounds like it could be have some potential. So the guys uh, hoping we could come out and uh, start t knocking on the rats that they have. We'll have to go see how good it is. It's always hard to know. Uh, sometimes people say they've got a huge infestation and it's barely anything. Sometimes they'll play it down, play it like, ah, oh, we got a few here and there and you get in there and it's pretty serious. So you never know until you get there. So we'll be doing that tomorrow, hopefully. And, um, hopefully that'll be a good day and we'll find out that it's a great place to wrap and we'll be getting you guys some great videos soon. So anyway, thanks guys. We appreciate your, uh, subscribing to us and watching our channel. Hope that this was interesting for y'all. And um, we'll see you another night. Thanks for watching. Now, here's the golden question. How do I turn this off? <laughs> <laughs> now you guys get to watch me struggle to figure out how this thing works. Let's see. Uh, we're going to say maybe you are 35. <laughs> <laughs> I found out how to mute. Oh, that Good night. Um, let's try... Rotating device. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. Challenged here. Let me see. Are you sure you want to stop streaming? Okay. Okay, good night guys. <laughs>